someone with more road racing experience than I have once told me, if you can't see the road, use the tree line to see where it goes. For a few minutes there, the remote Canadian highway felt like the Canuck Burgring, and we were driving it as if it were. It was a symphony of dips, crests, blind corners, and on and off camber corners, some with uneven pavement, and the 2017 Honda Civic Type R was absolutely annihilating it. The speed and unflappable control of this production car was an absolute revelation. It felt like a factory-backed homologation special race car, of which the absolute minimum number will be built and pre-sold. Minus the curbs and graffiti, Route 364, just south of Montana Tremblant en route to Lesnack Shack, would seem a good analogy for Germany's so-called Green Hell where the new Type R has officially snatched the infamous Nord's Life Circuit's fastest lap, 7.43.80, for a front-drive car away from a limited-edition Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport S by over 3 seconds. But back to our drive. To make it even more interesting, our Type R's speedometer was set to register mile per hour, but the signs were posted in kilometer per hour. Rather than doing the math for each blurry number in the side glass, for example 90 km per hour x 0.62 equals 55.8 miles per hour, it was easier, and offered a measure of plausible deniability, to simply pretend those signs read mile per hour suggestions. The Civic Type are easily maintained or even surpassed those speeds. Unimpeachable body control of this type and the ease and effortless urgency with which its 2.0-liter turbocharged inline four piles on the speed revealed to us the thorough engineering the Swindon, England-built Civic Type R saw before it ever reached our shores. Based on the 2017 Civic hatchback, one might imagine putting the fifth generation, but our first, Civic Type R's 306 horsepower and 295 pounds to foot of torque through its front wheels would be a prelude to wresting the steering wheel from the driver's hands, possibly pointing the car off the road. Instead, the combination of the Type R's bespoke mechanical, helical, limited slip front differential and a model exclusive dual axis front strut suspension with adaptive dampers effectively eliminates torque steer. With aluminum knuckles, the new setup separates the steering axis from the damping stroke, and it's unbelievable how well the car charges in a straight line, even at wide open throttle. The multi-link rear suspension also has parts unique to the Type R and has been optimized with a firmer anti-roll bar, springs, and bushings to aid in this mission for stability and control. Like the Civic C we recently drove. The Civic Type R solenoid valve adaptive dampers control the body motions in a wide variety of conditions. However, the Type R's smarter 3 mode, rather than the C's 2, dampers further rely on information from damper stroke and G load sensors to provide even better adaptability and minute control. In comfort mode, all the sharp edged bumps are polished off to deliver a firm but smooth ride. At the same time, the suspension geometry and hardware still provide excellent fundamental primary control. In the firmest plus R mode, those bumps are acknowledged, felt, and dispatched, but the tires always maintain contact with the road. In between, sport mode would be acceptable for most enthusiast drivers to use most of the time. The Type R also gets a beefed up version of the dual pinion variable ratio electric assist power steering system. We love that the ratio changes with the steering wheel angle, quicker at the ends, but each driving mode ramps up steering effort. We wish we could select comfort steering in plus R mode because the added heaviness simply muddies what feel there is for the front tires. In combination with the new front suspension, however, the steering is very direct and responsive, and it offers authoritative turn in. And because the chassis is so buttoned down, there's hardly a need to make mid-corner steering inputs, though if a driver does, he or she is again met with uncommonly precise and intuitive response from both the front and back of the car. 
those of tech loyalists who will bemoan the loss of Honda's screaming naturally aspirated engines that made peak horsepower at close to 8,000 revolutions per minute and peak torque at something like 6,500 revolutions per minute will find solace in the fact that the new 2.0-liter turbo 4 produces 306 horsepower at 6,500 revolutions per minute and 295 pounds to foot of torque from 2,500 to 4,500 revolutions per minute. This direct injected marvel with its low mass turbo spools out 9.3 pounds per square inch of boost and is drivable in practically any gear at almost any RPM. At low RPM, VTEC opens the exhaust valves early to spin up the turbo more quickly, reducing lag. Unlike the Civic C's 1.5 liter turbo that merely has a strong mid-range, the Type R's engine maintains its power from about 3,000 revolutions per minute all the way to its 7,200 revolutions per minute rev limiter in a very linear fashion, so there's no need to short shift to find the meat of the power. It's a heck of a motor, but unfortunately, it doesn't sound all that special. The Type R features a high flow exhaust system with three centrally located dips, the center one being a resonator that is set to enhance the sound. The speed of the exhaust rushing through the system determines whether the resonator pushes or pulls air through it. There's no solenoid, butterfly valve and no faux sound piped into the cabin. Depending on the engine speed, you'll hear a little exhaust snarl from the rear at low RPM, a bit of a cabin drone at 4000 revolutions per minute, and quite a lot of intake from the firewall at high RPM. Highway cruising produces very little exhaust sound. It's okay. Just nothing like either the Golf R or Focus RS, which can become rather annoying for long stints.